Welcome to another episode of the Faith Factor Podcast. I am your host, Bishop K. of the Faith Factor Podcast. Today I want to come from Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1 through 5 and it reads the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. O Lord how long shall I cry for help and how long will you not hear or cry to you violence and you will not save. Why do you make me see iniquity And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. Look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded. For I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. Today I want to come from a thought. God speaks through his activity. And I want to highlight verse 5, and I'll be reading from the Message Bible. Look around at the godless nations. Look long and hard. Brace yourself for a shock. Something's about to take place and you're going to be find it hard to believe. Beloved, Christians habitually seek God's voice through prayer, through his word, or through his messengers. Yet sometimes we fail to hear God speak through his activity. Even though he is working all around us, God encourages his people to watch for his activity so they will know how they should respond and adjust their lives. The disciples discovered much about God's power by witnessing Jesus calming a raging storm with a command, peace be still. Seeing Jesus dine with the notorious sinner, Zacchaeus, taught them a poignant message about God's love for sinners. Watching Jesus hang upon the cross communicated a compelling message of what God was willing to do to free people from sin. Discovering the empty tomb revealed an astounding truth about God's victory over death. Brothers and sisters, to those with spiritual discernment, God's activity is a significant revelation about his heart and his will. If you are sensitive to what God is doing around you, he will clearly speak to you through his activity. You will know that God is at work because what you see will astound you and human power and wisdom will not explain it. When you experience events that surpass your understanding and ability, It may be that God is communicating a critical message to you. Beloved, if you want to hear God's voice, look around you to see what he is doing. When you are watching for God at work, what you see will reveal his character. And you will have a fresh understanding of how to respond to him. Just let me give you a backdrop of this text. The nation's problems were caused by leaders who wouldn't obey the law. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem of the righteous and within the righteous so that justice is perverted. The rich exploited the poor and escape punishment by bribing the officials. 
the law was either ignored or twisted, and nobody seemed to care. The courts were crooked, officials were interested only in money, and in ammunition was completely unheeded, according to Exodus 23, verses 6 through 8. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> the Lord responded and answered the prophet's prayer. God answered his servant and assured him that he was at work among the nations, even though Habakkuk couldn't see it. God gave Habakkuk a revelation, not an explanation. Let me say that again. God gave Habakkuk a revelation, not an explanation. For what we always need in times of doubt is a view of God. The Lord doesn't owe us any explanations, but he does graciously reveal himself and his work to those who seek him. When God was doing this, it was so amazing, so incredible and unheard of. Even his prophet would have been shocked. God was planning to punish the Jews by using the godless Babylonians. They were a ruthless and impetuous people, a feared and dreaded people who were a law unto themselves and afraid of nobody. Their only purpose was to promote themselves and conquer and enslave other peoples. The Lord then used a number of pictures from nature to describe the Babylonians and how they treated people. Their horses had a speed of lepers and the ferocity of wolves, and their troops swooped down on their prey like vultures. Their army swept across the desert like the wind and gathered and deported prisoners the way a man digs sands and ships it to a foreign land. Could anything stop them? Certainly, God could stop them. But he was the one who was enlisting their aid. Nothing human could hinder their process. The Babylonians had no respect for authority, whether kings or generals. Listen, one of their practices was to put captured kings in cages and exhibit them like animals. They laughed at gates and walls as they built their siege ramps and captured fortified cities. They worshipped the god of power and depended wholly on their own strength. Habakkuk learned that God was not indifferent to the sins of the people of Judah. The Lord was planning to chasten Judah by allowing the Babylonians to invade the land and take them into exile. This wasn't the answer Habakkuk was expecting. He was hoping God would send a revival to his people, judge the evil leaders, and establish righteous in the land. Then the nation would escape punishment and the people and cities would be spared. Family, however, God had warned his people time and time again, but they would listen. Prophet after prophet had declared his word only to be rejected. And he had sent natural calamities like droughts and plagues and various military defeats, but the people wouldn't listen. Instead of repenting, the people hardened their hearts even more and turned for help to the gods of the nations around them. They had tried God's long suffering enough and it was time for God to act. Beloved, I just came by to let you know that God speaks through his activity. Pay attention, open your eyes and take note. Well, beloved, that's my time. I want you to know that God loves you and I do too. Till next time. Bye now.